Hetty Green was the most successful woman on Wall Street during the Gilded Age. She was a fearless speculator and made millions in the market by buying at times of financial panic. Since her death in 1916, she's been remembered as the witch of Wall Street, or even like many early women financiers, she may not be remembered at all. Very little information uh, has survived about women in Wall Street in the early years. Um, business corporations, for the most part, don't preserve shareholder records, but also because there were such negative attitudes towards women investors, a lot of women who uh, were involved in Wall Street just didn't advertise this fact or um, were quiet about it. That's George Robb, professor of history at William Patterson University. He wrote a book about this subject called Ladies of the Ticker, Women and Wall Street from the Gilded Age to the Great Depression. He explains what the public perception of the early days of the stock market was. The early years of Wall Street, many Americans thought of the stock market as an uh, immoral place. Christians were taught that you should work for your money, so people thought it was sinful to make money on the rise and fall of shares. Wall Street was also seen as a dangerous place. There were frequent financial crises, which caused people to lose their money or were blamed for depressions. And this is exactly why it was thought that women shouldn't be involved with Wall Street. Women were actively discouraged from investing in the stock market. They were told it was too dangerous. Um, it was also believed that women were too emotional to deal with the sudden rise and fall in shares. They should entrust their money to a male uh, advisor or trustees. And uh, brokers were also had a reputation for being hyper-masculine and aggressive. But Wall Street was also thought to be a sexually dangerous place for women. And the media did their best to contribute to keeping women away from Wall Street. The early media image of women who were associated with the stock market was very negative. And so, for example, many novels uh, that were written in the 19th century depicted women investors as being uh, emotionally unhinged or even um, sexually immoral. And stockbrokers were often depicted as uh, predators. And so the plots of these novels depicted women losing their money or losing their virtue. Uh, and so they, this was a way in which um, society was just warning women away or telling them that this was a dangerous place. But why all this effort to keep women away from the stock market? I think part of the reason that the media and the um, financial establishment were trying to keep women away from the stock market because men were trying to preserve to themselves an important um, way of making money, uh, but also they were trying to uphold uh, sexual divisions between what was appropriate for men and what was appropriate for women. Though despite all this, being able to invest in the stock market was important for financial independence for women. For middle-class women, the stock market was a very important way that they could make money. Uh, there were a lot of avenues of uh, employment that were closed to women. Women, for the most part, couldn't become professionals. Most women in the 19th century didn't have enough capital to uh, open their own businesses. So if you had a small inheritance and you invested that in stocks and bonds, you could make a steady uh, income that way. Even though investments were important to women's independence, Women stock market investors weren't supposed to exist, but they did. Victoria Woodhull was the first American women stock broker. She opened a brokerage business in New York City in 1870, and she attracted a lot of women customers. Uh, at first, the male brokers treated her as a kind of curiosity or an oddity, uh, but over time, they became very hostile to her. They didn't like the competition that she was giving, but also she um, exposed corruption on the part of male brokers. She opened a newspaper in which she publicized uh, stock frauds. And she also had a kind of a feminist attitude that the reason Wall Street was so corrupt was because it was dominated by men. You needed more women brokers. If you had more women on Wall Street, Wall Street would be a more honest place. And uh, the men didn't want to hear that. And remember Hetty Green from earlier? Hetty Green was the most successful woman financier in America. Uh, she was often called the Queen of Wall Street. From the 1880s to the 1910s, she was the richest woman in America. She made a vast fortune through investments in railroads and uh, real estate. But she also had her detractors who called her the Witch of Wall Street. And they argued that the only reason she succeeded is because she was like a man, that she had a powerful masculine brain. She was ruthless and aggressive. 
in the way that male brokers were, and that women should have nurturing qualities. They shouldn't have these kinds of personal ambitions. To align themselves with the societal ideals of what a woman should be, some women took a different approach. Ella Rawls Reader was a company promoter from Alabama in the early 20th century. And she went to great lengths to make herself uh, acceptable to the public and to contrast herself with someone like Hetty Green, who had such a bad reputation. So um, Ella Rawls Reader um, presented herself in an ultra feminine way. She would dress fashionably in white lacy dresses and uh, wear long white gloves. And she would talk about the fact that she had no personal ambition. She didn't want to get rich herself. She was only in uh, the financial business to help her family or to help other people. And even though Wall Street was dominated by white society, there were still examples of black women who were investing. Most women investors um, in the stock market in the 19th century were white women. It's difficult to find information about black women investors, but um, there were some interesting examples. For example, uh, Mary Ellen Pleasant uh, was a black woman who moved to California during the gold rush, and she made a lot of money operating boarding houses. And then she invested that in government bonds and bank stock and became a very wealthy woman doing so. I think it's important for us to understand the history of women in Wall Street, because Wall Street is a part of our economy where women are still struggling for parity where uh, men still dominate uh, this financial sector. And I think if we better understand the kind of uh, prejudices that have hindered women, women are, would be in a better position today to, um, to achieve equality and to um, make their mark on Wall Street.